We want our students to learn on their own, anywhere, anytime, even after graduation. But many of us may wonder how to make this happen. Learning contract is one of the powerful methods that you can use. In the following, Dr. Mabel Chen will share her experience of using learning contracts to help her students decide what to learn, plan how to learn, and reflect on what they have learned so as to enhance their capacity for independent learning. To help students to become independent learners, we need to be able to engage them in these processes. So learning contract is a good idea to help students to demonstrate whether they can learn independently or not. A learning contract. Learning contract. Well, I think it's a very new idea for us and it's quite interesting to me that we have to achieve it by a contract. So as the name suggests, a learning contract is like a contract. It's a kind of agreement between two parties. It can be between the employer and the employee, the trainer and the trainee, or the teacher and the students. So it can be used in the education field or in the workplace. So the main purpose is to encourage self-access work and independent learning. For me, I used the idea of a learning contract in a language proficiency course. So I asked students to set some learning objectives and then they have to think about what to do in the course of the semester to achieve them. I think I'm good at speaking and writing, but not that good at vocabulary. Sometimes when I go to Western restaurants, I find it difficult to understand the words appeared on the menus. Uh, I think I should improve this and I will study the vocabulary related to food and cooking. Awareness of learning needs is fundamental to independent learning. We need to engage students in thinking about their learning needs instead of telling them what to do. This is a very important step to foster independent learning. Students have to be in charge of what to learn and how to learn. So a learning contract effectively shifts the responsibility of planning to the students. As you can see from the learning contract, students have to first write down two general learning objectives. So they can be about speaking or writing. Uh, and then in the table, they have to give very specific information about the objectives and what they plan to do. Since I want to study the vocabularies on the menus, uh, when I go to some Western restaurants, I think I can study the menus there and to see how the dishes are named. And I know that there are lots of menus are uh, available online and I can study them as well to improve my vocabulary in this area. After receiving the learning contract from students at the beginning of the semester, I give them feedback. Uh, some students might have some misconceptions about learning a language, so I need to give them some advice. Uh, some other students might be too ambitious, they want to do so much work in the course of the semester, so I need to give them advice and guidance at the initial stage when they formulate the learning objectives. Otherwise, they will not be doing something meaningful in the learning contract. She gave us a lot of um, guidance on how we can achieve the goal. For the session part, uh, we initially have some a casual uh, conversation with our classmates, but uh, she suggests us some um, uh, formal, dis mm. formal discussion, like a debate on some political issues. So we can improve our uh, debate skills and also some uh, vocabulary involved in the political environment. Self-monitoring is an important part of independent learning, but it's often overlooked by students. So building in checkpoints and interim review is a good way to help students develop the habit of monitoring their learning. Originally, I planned to write film review, but then I found that uh, in the middle of the semester, the workload uh, is actually quite heavy, so I just uh, changed it to other tasks. Yeah. Students have to submit learning evidence for a few times in the course of the semester. For example, week 4, 6, 9, 14. So this is to encourage them to do self-access work regularly, instead of starting to do some work at the end of the semester when they have to submit the assignment. So why will you have such an idea using T as the theme? 
Okay, well, actually, our conference is APF and ISIS 2012, and our delegates come from all over the world. Yeah. So I think currently my progress is good because I, because I stick to the plan, and other than the menus, I think I can also work on the recipes, like the verbs, the sentence structure, because uh, they cannot be learned from the menus. So I hope your guests will like them very much. Yeah, thank you very much. You. Yeah. In the middle of the semester, for example, week seven, I asked students to form into groups in class to share what they have done in the learning contract. So I formed students with similar learning objectives into the same group, and then they can share what they have done and then learn from each other. So they can also have the opportunity to adjust and modify the learning plan. Today we want to present about our... At the end of the semester, in week 14 or 15, I asked students to make a presentation about the learning contract. So they have to tell their classmates what the learning objectives are, what they have done to achieve the learning objectives, and also the learning outcomes. So uh, this is a very good opportunity for them to spell out and also reflect on what they have done and to share the learning experience with their peers. I think the presentation can consolidate my uh, learning experience in the whole semester because through the presentation I can uh, understand more about oh, what I have achieved in the semester. Mm. And also from our explanation, we can uh, learn the methods of others to learn English. So we can compare with each other and also uh, gain the knowledge from others. Through reflection, students have to evaluate their independence learning. So they have to link what they have done to the learning outcomes and decide whether they have achieved the learning objectives they set at the beginning of the semester. At the beginning, the teacher's role is to help students understand the concept of the learning contract and its importance and also help them formulate some learning objectives. And then in the middle of the semester, it's about how to help students monitor and reflect on what they have done. At the end, it's about assessment. It's about the quality of their work, whether they have done something which can help address uh, the learning objectives. Independent learning is very important because it allows students to own the learning process. They have considerable say in decision making. They can decide on what to learn and how to learn. So this is important not just for studying, but in the workplace, in different professions. I would prefer learning contract. Yeah, because uh, during the classroom, maybe we only have the chance to do some boring, boring work, just like writing essays or, yeah. But um, learning contract can give me a chance and even inspire me to have independent learning. I would also prefer learning contract because um, I think different people may have different needs. So uh, if the uh, lecturer assign as same assignment to all of us, and Maybe different people may have different values and, and I think it cannot suit everyone's needs. So with mm. learning contracts, so we can decide what we can learn and what we can achieve. So I think yeah. it's more flexible. Uh, as a university student, uh, we cannot expect the professor to give you everything you need to learn. Instead, we need to s s look for some, some more information for ourselves and to be a, be an independent learner. Mm -hmm. 